Hello, PA. There be family and friends. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, February 23rd. And for our Tuesday trivia today, we have traveled all the way back to 1920 Chicago. And we are standing in front of the Bidden Dome Theater, which was one of the premier theaters in Chicago in the earlier, earlier part of the 20th century, where they would show films by predominantly African American cast. So we have a very special um, Tuesday trivia plan for today. But before we get started, we're going to get started with the moving and grooving. And to get us in that early 20th century mood, we're going to play the Betsy Smith who was the, the premier blue, uh, blues artist of the early part of the 20th century. beautiful voice that she Smith had. So like I said, guys, we are in 1920 Chicago. We are in front of the Big Dome Theater, which was one of the premier theaters built in Chicago in 1919 that would show films that featured predominantly African-American cast. So let's do a little bit of history here. So in the 1920s, there was a lot of segregation where black and whites couldn't go to the same, eat at the same restaurants. In fact, in the South, there were Jim Crow laws which made segregation legal. So you would see white only, or black only, um, colored only signs. That was part of our history. Uh, more dark part of our history. Now in Chicago, which is more in the north, Jim Crow laws weren't necessarily legal, but there was still a lot of separation and segregation. So the Big Dome Theater was the premier theater in Chicago where they would show films by, that were featured predominantly African American cast. And those films because it was more difficult and there wasn't a lot of diversity and it was more, more difficult. Also in Hollywood for African-American artists, a lot of African-American directors and artists produced their own independent films. And those films were referred to as race films. And from about 1915 to the early 1950s, there were about 500 what are considered race films that were produced. A lot of them have been lost and there's only about a hundred left today. And they were actually forgotten about until about the 1980s when the network BET started to um, restore them. 
I'm one of the premier directors who considered the first prolific African-American director was a director named Oscar Michelle. And he's who we're really going to focus on today. So Oscar Michelle was born in 1884 and passed away on March um, 25th. 1951, but in the early 20s, um, he started to produce and create, write, direct, and produce his own films. So, very much like someone like Spike Lee today, um, who writes, produces, has his own production company. Um, now, in the early um, 1900s, or the, or the 1919, um, Oscar Michelle formed his own production company called the Michelle Film and Book Company of Sioux City. It was in Chicago, and through that company, he wrote and produced a lot of his own um, films. And because he was a writer, he also wrote novels. His first film, The Homesteader, he produced in 1919. His next film, which we're going to have, but which is at the, has been preserved because it's in our gates. So we're going to look at a couple of gl clips from within our gates. Um, and we're going to we'll look at the first clip and then we'll come back. And this is a silent film that um, Oscar Michelle produced in 1920. Um, let's take a look at the first clip. Okay, so here it says, Oscar Michelle presents us in our gates with the renowned Negro artist of Lem Freer. Written, directed, and produced by Oscar Michelle. I'm kind of reading what you're seeing, guys. At the opening of our drama, we found our characters in the North with their prejudices and hatred of the South behind the sit but that does not prevent the occasional lynching of a Negro. So we have a woman here, she's a woman, she's reading, she's in her living room, and she's reading it. So Sylvia Landry, a school teacher from the South, visiting her northern cousin, is a typical of the intelligent Negro of our time, a volunteer. That's the actress who plays her. Another woman enters, and they look at each other, and the woman goes to sit down, and they're talking to each other, and she says, well, that is the dearest Sylvia, words fail to describe my joy upon receiving the letter in which you agreed to be my wife by the same Mail, I also received the notice of my transfer to Brazil, who do everything in my power so that within the month you can be mine. I will send you a telegram around the date of my departure from here, love, comrade. This is Alma Pritchard, the divorcee, is secretly in love with comrade, and ready to give marriage another try. Oh, I just love looking at that clip, guys. One thing that's been really fun about preparing for this class is I got to learn a lot, too. And one of the things that I loved about that clip is um, that how he introduced each character um, but, and the actor who was playing him. So that's something I loved about this. Remember, this is a silent film. But let's take a look at Another clip from the film, we have a man and a woman, and they're reading, they're sitting together at a table in a room. It says, Reverend Wilson Jacob, founder of the School and Apostle of Education for the Black Race. And the concept of the sister, Reverend Jacob, so I like in this unequal struggle against the Negro's ignorance. We have two, we have a, we see a woman, and then we see a man and a woman working and writing in a book and working together. And then the woman goes to the door, 
but when we respond to a small advertisement, King Sylvia, we have Sylvia she's shaking hands with the man, the reverend, and the sister. He gives her a seat, and they're talking together. Sylvia has a nice little hat on there. <laughs> And then, and others who could not read. So there's reverend, so we see a family, and it says, the weavers ate up the cutting crop, and I, and being that they could not pay the rent, they took my mule. So we have a man with his two children. I hear about your school, and so we bought from my place a ways off, so my children here don't, do nothing but say, Papa, without schooling, we can never amount to nothing. Again, we see the man with the children. So I had here, sir, ready to work day and night so my children can get some schooling and be useful. And okay, so guys, did you enjoy that clip? I did. One of the things that's been really fun about preparing for this class and all my trivia classes is I get to learn a lot, too. So, that was fun with the no gate. It was a silent film that Oscar Michaud produced, wrote, directed, and produced in 1920. But he also, when hockey did come out, he also produced talkies. Um, and this, um, and he produced films from 1919 to 1949. And he produced, like I said, over. 40 films in that time period. The next clip we're going, we are going to see is from his film, Lying Lips, which he wrote, directed, and produced in these one can never tell. It always pays to reserve decision until you learn more. That's true. Who is the girl? Her name is Elsa Bellwood. Do you know her? In a general way. I've talked with her. She's considered a very good singer and dancer and works at the Poodlaw Cabaret. I see. Do you know anything about her reputation, her character? She's in the show business, you know. This case seems to offer something. It is unusual. For instance, Someone calls over the telephone. And insists upon talking to a woman you can see it who has been dead for hours. And times a call when he knew the girl would have returned from her work and at such a late hour. If the girl is innocent in this murder, then someone who called knew something about who did it. If they did not kill her themselves. Now if the girl killed her aunt, she would have had to leave the cabaret. I guess, uh say uh, between 10.30 p.m. and midnight. Go home, shoot her aunt while she was asleep, go back to the cabaret, go on with her work, and then come back here in an hour and call the police station. It's too complicated for the arresting officer. There's only one thing to do. We'll have to take her downtown and hold her. I'm sorry, she seems like a very nice girl and truthful. But somebody killed that woman. Now, as the girl was the only one here, there's only one thing to do. Take her downtown and book her. Come on. Does, does this mean that, that I'm under arrest? I'm awful sorry, but you are. Oh. And, and it means that, that you're gonna lock me up? Put me in jail? Yes. I'm awful sorry. 
I'm not blaming you. There's been a murder, and the law has got to find out who did it. Well, there's no one else to hold it this time but me. So... If you have an idea who did it... No, not the least. I... not the least. I... why, I can't imagine anyone wanting to kill my aunt. Poor aunt. <laughs> I, I was thinking of myself. I, I've never been arrested before. And, and now they're holding me for something that, that I don't know anything about. Well, that's fun, guys. And, you know, guys, the last week, again, remember, with these films, he didn't always have a lot of money. So a lot of the things that lighting or production value may be very different than films we see today. But the fact that he, this is a man, a director who, because he wasn't able to work within the Hollywood system, produced over 40, 40 films outside the Hollywood system, I think, and provided opportunities for African-American actors and actresses and filming crew. And yet sometimes he worked with, um, Caucasian actors as well, but predominantly Oscar Show produced films about African Americans for African American audiences. And that's why I wanted to celebrate him today for Tuesday Trivia Class. Now, I also have a couple of Tuesday Trivia questions for you, but the fun thing about the bonus questions is they're all in the video, so if you have, if you want to go back, you can just go back and um, for the question. So, question number one: What year did Oscar Michel open his film studio? Question number two: What city did Oscar Michel um, has his film studio in? Okay, good. And question number three, about how many films did Oscar Michaud produce during his career? So again, if you run to the answers, you can go back and watch the video because they're all in the class. All right? So question number one, what year did Oscar Michaud open the film studio? The Michaud Film and Book Company of the Sioux City. What year? Question number two, what city was Oscar Michaud's film company in, where, where, where was it in, and at what city? And question number three, about how many films did Oscar Michaud produce and direct during his career? Those are the three questions. You know, you send your answers, you can call me, or, um, send your answers um, to the contact information at the end of the video. So let's end the way from again. Let's do a little bit more business. Guys, thank you. I hope you enjoyed class today. And I'll see you tomorrow back in the 21st century. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to end with a little bit more business. And also, at the end of the video, I'm showing them posters from my mother films that we produced during the race film genre.
Question number two. What 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 city was Oscar Michaud's film studio? Question number three. How many films did Oscar Michaud produce during his career? Okay, email answer to dejclass at gmail.com or text or leave a voicemail at 323-364-2478. See you tomorrow, guys.